What's going on everyone, a draft nerd here. If you're new to the channel, I make college basketball slash NBA draft content. So if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. My last two videos have been doing really well. Thanks to everybody who has been supporting. So we're gonna keep the theme going because college basketball actually started uh, yesterday. Um, I actually been having this video planned before then, but I haven't been able to get around to it. But if you cannot tell by the thumbnail title of this video, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about is this the year for the Houston Cougars? I think they're the number three team in the country. And yesterday they played uh, Northern Colorado and they, you know, made slight work in Northern Colorado. But really, I just want to talk about the team as a whole, kind of disregard the game that they had yesterday, just because of the fact that, like I said, this is more of a outlook on the whole video. So will this be their year and it, and it very well could be so the some background about the Houston Cougars if you don't know about them but if you're a fan you probably already know this um so they've made it they made it to like back-to-back -back national championships however they finished runner-up so I think they lost to NC State and then they lost to Georgetown I believe it's not like they're unfamiliar with success it's especially last year you know if you win your AAC conference uh, regular season then you win the postseason and then I think you make it to the elite eight last year and you lost some key guys so like so some guys they lost last year, they lost Taze Moore, Kyler Edwards, and Fabian White. So these guys played significant minutes. So whether however you feel about these guys, like in terms of their play, their their own court play, they played very significant minutes last year and you're missing those guys. However, you're replacing them with guys like, well, one for sure is a, a healthy Marcus Sasser. So like I have my notes right here. So that's why I'm kind of like peeking over, but you're replacing them with a healthy Marcus Sasser. I think he only played like 12 games last year. So this year you definitely got like a very efficient score. Uh, then you pair him with Jamal Sheed, who I think is if he was taller, I think there would be more talk about him as far as going into the NBA. He's only 6'1", but he plays like he's 6'5". Uh, he does need to work on his shot a little bit, but he's a great playmaker. He's a, an, an excellent defensive player. Um, literally, I think if he was just taller, you would hear a lot more about him in terms of just his projectability into the NBA. And then you also have Jarees Walker, or yeah, I'm assuming that's how you say it. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. But he's a freshman, big body. His tight, his body type reminds me of Zion, um, and I'm not. He doesn't. He doesn't play like Zion at all. He's a, he's a little slower. Zion was extremely athletic at that size, even though people say he was overweight. Zion still never looked slow. It just wasn't healthy for him to be moving like that at his size. But that's kind of what Drew's Walker, or, Drew, or how, like I said, however you say it. That's how he that's what he reminds me of is that Zion body type because he is very physical. Uh, we saw in the first game against Northern Colorado, albeit Northern Colorado, he was a menace in the paint. I think he had like 12 rebounds. And that's kind of something I actually want to talk about for the whole team. And we'll get into that in a second. But he's only six, eight. And he like played basically played the center position away. He was just grabbing all those boards. You would like for him to finish around the rim more. I think he's a very consistent, strong finisher. Um, he didn't show that yesterday against Northern Colorado, but I think that that is what he's like. That's his projectability. He did it before at IMG. Uh, that's where he played high school ball at. So they Houston has a very good outlook on their team. That so I know a lot of people say oh the division and things like that, which hopefully that will change when Houston moves to the Big Twelve, but. A lot of people give it to them because of their conference. Their conference isn't the strongest conference in the world. You have Memphis in there, um, and then you have – I don't remember who else is in there, but I know it's Memphis for sure. Oh, SMU is also in there. Um, Temple, teams like that. But anyway – Despite their conference, I think that this is a very solid team. There's a reason that they've been to the Final Four. I think yeah, the Final Four a couple years ago and then the Elite Eight last year. This is a very solid team. And the only concern I have about them so far, um, and I think Kelvin Sampson is going to do a good job of kind of really – helping these guys out by the way he's going to have them play is that they don't really have anyone over six, nine. Now granted the, the heights I got were from the actual Houston Cougar website when I was kind of like preparing for this video. So some of those guys could have grown since then. Some of it could be inaccurate. You'll see different weights and sizes for a lot of different, but you'll see different weights and sizes for LeBron James, depending on what website you go on. So it's really hard to tell, but from what I've seen, they don't really have anybody over six, nine. Now, is that going to be a problem right now? No, because like I said, Dries Walker, he already he plays 
very well. Like I think, um, I think that he plays bigger than what he is. Uh, it also has a lot to do with how physical he is, which you don't really see too much in a college game sometimes, or how physical these guys can be. But um, yeah, he plays very physical. He's very athletic. Like I said, he's just he literally reminds me of Zion. He's just not as athletic, and that like well, not as quick, not as fast. But the athleticism's there. The big body's there. He's not afraid to use his big body. It literally reminds me of Zion. It's literally he's just not as fast. That to me. And Zion is just also the easiest comparison because a lot of people know. If I really wanted to deep dive, I probably could find a better comparison. I don't like comparing people to like guys who are very established or anything like that because it does put like some uh, rough precedent on them. But that's literally what he reminds me of. And then I haven't even got to the other freshman on the team, which is um, Terrence. I really don't know how to pronounce his name, but Terrence. Uh, Kareem New. I'm going to learn how to pronounce it, but let me know if I'm wrong. He's like a wing um, guard. I mean, it depends. I think in the NBA, he's going to project to be a guard. He's 6'5". Right now, you know that that's more of a forward spot probably in college. Um, but he can do it all. He's not really great at anything, but he's good at everything. And I think he projects to be like a good 3 and D defender. I think he can... Um, really be able to uh you know spread the floor i think that he'll create a lot of space he knows how to get to the basket he's a really good defender uh i think that what's best for him i think it's gonna be like a florida state situation where he it's best for him to come off the bench and why by florida state i mean florida state is known for having guys who come off the bench who get drafted in the first round that's just what they do and i think he for this team is probably better for him to come off the bench because you have someone that can come off the bench and literally defend, score, play, make all those things. Now he's not the world's best playmaker, but I feel as though he's good enough to where you don't need to double him up with Marcus Sasser or, um, or Jamal Sheed. I really feel like he can do that by himself. And I know he's a freshman, but it is what it is. I th- I think it's going to be one of those situations where he ends up getting drafted in the first round, even though he came off the bench and also his numbers and his play, it won't, Seem like he came off the bench, but we all know in reality he'll be coming off the bench. So I think that Houston really has a decent team here. Like I said, my only issue with them is that they don't really have anybody over 6'10. And we know that going into once you go into the tournament, things get a little more rough. You, you know, you play a more variety of teams. So let's say they run into like my team, North Carolina, which who didn't look that good yesterday, but this first game and UNC Wilmington actually isn't a cupcake game. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, I think they should have beat him by more, but that's besides the point. Anyway, you run into a team like that who has size like Armando Baycott and Pete Nance. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? And that's just one team like North Carolina really only has like one really big player. And that's Armando Baycott. But we know some teams like to have three or four really big guys, seven feet, seven foot guys. What are you going to do in those situations? Now, can you outmuscle them? Probably the way Jarese Walker plays. Uh, and also, like, you have guys like Jawan Roberts who plays a little rough, a little tough. Um, but in reality, what are you going to do in those situations? And like I said, I think Kelvin Sampson is going to set those guys up for success. I think that if you run and gun and also your perimeter defending is so good that it might not even really matter, especially if Drew Walker can rebound like that, like he did against um, Northern Colorado, it might not even matter. Because if you're making everybody take perimeter shots anyway or you're locking them up on their perimeter and they can't even get inside – does it really matter that you don't have the size if you're still able to like team rebound? Because everybody who's like in a projected start lineup or basically in the start lineup, all of them can rebound, you know, so in their own way. So I think that the size may not matter, especially if they run and gun. Um, but we'll see. I, I think that overall you have a really solid team. I kind of really briefly want to go over uh, like some key players, potential starters and things like that. Uh, so for your potential starters, like I said, you have Marcus Sasser, you have Jamal Sheed, which I made this graphic before the first game of the season. So it says potential starters. And I think these guys really ended up being the starters. But I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, Marcus Sasser, Jamal Sheed, Tremont Mark, uh, Jarese Walker and Jawan Roberts. I think that that's a solid starting lineup. I think that all these guys bring different things to the table. Uh, like I said, you have the ultimate guard pairing. I think I think it's one of the better guard pairings in the country, if you ask me. Uh, I think both these guys have NBA potential. Um, is really size to me that is what is holding these guys back. Um, and then we go on to like key players. So key players: Terrence, Akranu, Akri, Akrini. I will learn how to say it. I promise. Uh, Javier, uh, Francis, Ramon Walker Jr., and Reggie Chaney. So these guys are also a quality bench. And another guy I am forgetting about. 
uh, that is not on this graphic, but who played yesterday. And I was really, he's a microwave. I mean, granted, was, I got to say it's against Northern Colorado because I know people will say that. But Emmanuel Sharp is a microwave. He got like 12 points in eight minutes or something like that. He is a microwave and just a freshman from what I saw. So very talented guy um, and, and definitely excited to see what he can bring to the bench uh, for this team because it's, it's it's the long game. Like, it, I mean, I know, you know, sometimes you forget that it's the long game because a lot of times in college they run like eight deep, maybe seven, sometimes even seven. But it's really about the long game because you need that bench. I think that you have a bunch of guys that can come off the bench and provide valuable minutes and then as long as Marcus has to stay healthy I, I, I don't know this team this, this is going to be a talented team for sure that does it for this video let me know what you think of the video down in the comment section below let me know what team I should do next I'm interested to do every team um, like I said college basketball and NBA draft content here uh, I will be working on some more draft profiles as well, if you're familiar with those on my channel. So uh, look out for those. And I also am putting together a big board with player profiles. Like it's like a spreadsheet. It's a long spreadsheet. And that's really what I've been working on. So that's why I haven't been able to release like I want to because I've really been trying to get that together. Um, but anyway, I am I plan on, you know, I have a couple of more videos in mind. But let me know because if y'all want to see something that I don't already have planned, and of course I'm going to do that. Uh, but I have a draft profile coming. And I think I need to pick another team to do a video about. Someone told me to do UK. Uh, Kentucky, so we'll, I'm interested because Carson Wallace is as advertised. Uh, Tre, Tre, uh, what's his name? Trayvon Brant Brazil from Arkansas is also as advertised. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.